This, this is Cliff Stoll talking about Klein bottles. The thing about a Klein bottle is if you take two Mobius loops, I love and this guy. You sew them together. Remember, if you have if you have a piece of paper with four edges and another piece of paper with four edges, you combine them, you lose two edges, right? So when you sew things that have edges together, you lose the edges. Well, the cool thing about, so a Mobius loop has only one edge. If you take, make a Mobius loop out, yeah, well, that's exactly what <laughs> you take a Mobius loop like this, right? And you make it like this, instead of making a hoop, is this a Mobius loop? No! Is this a Mobius loop? Yes! Okay, so you take and you make a Mobius loop. Mobius like banana. This. Hold on to that. <laughs> you make another Mobius loop. Is this a Mobius loop? No. Is this a Mobius loop? Yes. Okay, hold on to that. <laughs> so you take these two Mobius loops and you sew their common edge together. This has one edge and this has one edge. More feedback. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, isn't it wonderful? Okay. Um, so you take these two Mobius loops and you stitch their common edge together. And from what you remember a moment ago, when you stitch the edges of two things together, you lose one and sometimes two edges. Well, each of these Mobius loops has one edge. So if I connect them together, I'll lose, this, here's an edge, here's an edge, I'll lose two edges, so I should, okay, one plus one is two, two minus two is, I'm going to have something that has no edges. Worse than that, remember that the cool thing about a Mobius <laughs> Remember that the cool thing about a Mobius loop <laughs> is that it has one side. Right? A Mobius loop. So if I track this Mobius loop along here, it goes around and comes back on the same side. A Mobius loop has only one side, one edge. When I connect two of them together, I get something that has no edges and one side. Is that terrific or what? Here's Woo! something that has no edges and one side. Well, how can I have no sides? Well, it has one side. If I have an ant walking along here, if I'm an ant walking along here, well, I'm on this side over here. I walk along here, bup, 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 bup. this looks like an edge, but it's really smooth. There's no sharp edge. I'll go zip, 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 along there, and I can get to a millimeter away from my finger. So, so I can go from here to just the other side of there, just by walking along it, I won't cross an edge. That's different from, hold on to that. That's different from this bottle. If I make this bottle arbitrarily thin, I'll get an extremely sharp edge over here. And so an ant walking along here, trying to get to the inside, has to cross this edge, which is mathematically fascinating. But it means that this bottle has two sides and one edge. That, however, <laughs> that, however, has no edges. There's no sharp edge, and it has only one side. So, an ant, thank you very much, an ant is able to walk entirely 
across the entire surface along here, which we call the outside, and along the inside without any problem at all. It has one side, and what looks like an edge over here is really smooth. If I make the glass arbitrarily thin, in other words, really, really skinny, really, really, really thin glass, this will still be a smooth curve. As a mathematician would say, it's continuously differentiable everywhere. A bottle like hers over there has a lip. And if you make the plastic really thin, the lip becomes really sharp. This guy has no edge and one side. How much time do I have? Fifteen minutes, I'm halfway done. I haven't started yet. So, <laughs> my idea is about 15 years, 15, 20 years ago, I started, I made one of these. And I thought, I traded my computer skills to a glass blower. And I made one. And over in Berkeley, I'm walking along and, and, and I make this claim bottle. If I figure, hey, this is what I've always wanted my whole life. I walk over to the mathematics department. I'm going to see Professor Ken Ribbon, who's a real mathematician, not a phony one like me. And I'm going to see this mathematician. I'm walking along over at Evans Hall of Cal, and I'm walking down the hallway, and this guy comes up and says, You! I say, yeah. He says, you? Why, 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 why? That's a Klein model, isn't it? I say, yeah. And he says, I've always wanted one. So I say, here, you can have it. So he takes it. I go back over to 4th Avenue, Berkeley, fire up an assembly and torch, and we make another one. I go up to MSRI, the Math Science Research Institute, up on the hills of Berkeley, and I want to go see another mathematician. I'm walking down the hallway, and this mathematician walks up to me and says, that's a Klein bottle! <laughs> I said, yeah. And he says, I've always wanted one. I said, here, you can have it. <laughs> so, 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 so this guy, you know, he, he, he said, here, you can have it. He takes it. So, so, okay. So I go back to the glass shop, fire up the glass lake, make a third one. This time, so I go over to the math, math department, go up to Ken Rivet. I walk in his door, he looks at it and says, that, 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 that's a Klein bottle. And he says, I said, yeah. He says, I've always wanted one. And he says, how much do you want for it? <laughs> and it never occurred to me. So I say, took a day and a half to make it, 100 bucks. <laughs> This guy reaches in his pocket and starts counting out $20 bills. And I'm saying, this is bizarre. <laughs> and this five watt incandescent light bulb goes off. I can figure out a way to extract money from the fourth dimension. <laughs> I learned about that in physics and in, in, in statistical mechanics and in... And, 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 um, uh, thermodynamics or something called a semi-permeable membrane. All you have to do is make a semi-permeable semi -permeable membrane that lets money in but not out. <laughs> so I say, that's what I'll do. So I start making Klein bottles in quantity. 25 of them. They cost me about 200 bucks each. And I find out that mathematicians are pretty cheap. They'll only pay like 50 or 60 bucks each. So there's a sign problem, as mathematicians would say. And I'm getting to what I'm doing now. I'm almost ready to start my talk. Um, so I say, okay, that's cool. So I go around to, to glass blowers and I say, how much does it take? How much would it take to actually have a to make a lot of these? Not just five or ten of them, but to make a whole bunch of them. Well, it turns out the way to do it is you have to, you can't just make one or two or three. You gotta make like five or ten of them. Right? <laughs> so, so I say, I know, I'll put 
put it up for bids. <laughs> the wallet's in my pocket. So, yeah. <laughs> so it turns out, in order to make it cheaply enough, I have to get people real glass blowers to make them by the thousand. Well, a thousand Klein bottles, first of all, costs a scat of money, but it takes up a whole lot of room. Like, a lot of room. Even though it can be mathematically proven that a Klein bottle has zero, count them, zero volume, <laughs> it still requires a finite space for reasons that I can't figure out. So, I start making them different shapes and sizes of them. And it oh, turns out that cool. it turns out that one of the things I've realized is I've been given the opportunity to make an empirical test of to make an empirical test of what what is that um, remember SAT questions yes. to fill in blanks okay to everyone here. Here's the question that I wanted to answer. A blank and his or her blank are soon blank. A fool and his money. One minute. A fool and his money so, are soon so parted. My idea is to see how I can separate mathematicians from their filthy lucre. Nice. And in order to do this, I have to like make a thousand of these things. Well, I then need a storage locker. Storage locker people have it made. They do nothing and charge you 300 bucks a month, <laughs> which turns out to be roughly about how much the business generates. <laughs> so I said, my wife, your wife, Pat, says, why don't you store them under the house? Oh, um, can you start the video? Not yet, but in a minute. <laughs> so I've got a crawl space three feet high under my house. And so I got some of these conveyor skateboards and I go scootling under the house and all this stuff, you know, just crawling under there, pushing boxes that are this big, filled with zero volume bottles. <laughs> until I turn 60 years old. And then it turns out all of you people who are under 60 are going to discover that you're back to something wonderful on your 60th birthday that I won't tell you about. It's a big surprise. <laughs> and so uh, my son Danny said, why don't you build a robot to move